If you haven't been following the preview coverage, Hellgate is an action RPG that has players ranging across a demolished London in an effort to fight back against an invasion by the forces of Hell. But what sounds like an awesomely cool concept really never gets off the ground owing to some obvious weaknesses in the execution. To begin with, the story has some truly interesting elements, but it's far too thin. Too much of the story is given to you in conversations and not enough during the actual gameplay. Now we love the few moments where we were actually seeing plot play out in front of our eyes, but for the rest of the story you'll just be reading small snippets of background dropped by your quest givers. When you do get quests and head out into the world of Hellgate, you'll come up against a very satisfying number and variety of enemies. The evil demons and beasts and undead baddies that populate this world are really out in force, so there's plenty of combat to be found around every corner in this world. Better still, the enemies all have different combat styles, so you'll need to plan your attacks carefully if you want to stay alive. Unfortunately, the combat during the first few minutes doesn't change substantially over the course of the next several hours. Sure, you get better weapons and some new skills, and you'll face tougher and more numerous enemies, but combat in Hellgate boils down to a predictable formula whose only real variety is in the abilities of the monsters that you're facing. And since the combat is almost entirely stat-based, you'll start to feel somewhat detached from the action. Sure, you're using the mouse and keyboard to dodge and swing your sword, but really it's your character sheet and inventory that are doing the fighting for you. On the plus side, the character types are nicely varied and the leveling system gives you a real sense of progress while you play. Now there's a wide range of powerful loot that you can grab to equip your characters, and there's a whole system of upgrades and modifications that you can use to personalize how all your gear functions. In short, Hellgate really gives players a tremendous amount of flexibility in personalizing their characters. It's too bad then that the inventory system is so cumbersome. I've been reviewing games long enough to know that for every feature I criticize, I'm bound to get 10 emails from people who tell me that it's their favorite part of the game. But I think you'd be hard pressed to find anyone in this world who actually thinks this inventory system is convenient. While the game picks up items for you automatically, it doesn't arrange them in your pack with any eye towards maximizing space, so you'll frequently have to pause in your adventures to hand sort your pack just to make room for new items. Now fortunately, you can buy items that let you instantly teleport to a vendor to sell the stuff that you've collected already, but even so, it's a real pain. Add in the fact that you have to hand manage all your augmentation items and it's just so much unnecessary busy work. Though Hellgate is set in London, you'll be spending most of your time traveling through repetitive city streets and generic subway tunnels that could represent any large city. The few set pieces where you get to see or explore a recognizable London location are nice, but too few and far between. Since Hellgate makes use of a random map creator for almost all of its levels, you'll soon start to recognize familiar components cropping up again and again and again, and you'll often find mission objectives located in unusual places. But before you reach the point of recognizing nearly every element in the environment, you'll have to admit that Hellgate has a really nice visual aesthetic. It's very moody and atmospheric, and it definitely helps to contribute to the overall sense of creepy menace that the story hints at. Even better, the visuals are designed to make use of the modular elements in such a way that the levels seem seamless. Monsters and character models are nicely detailed with plenty of great touches. On the downside though, the combat animations don't really have much life in them at all, and since you'll be staring at them almost constantly, it's hard to get past that. Like Diablo before it, Hellgate has attempted to bridge the single player and massively multiplayer experiences with a robust online mode. But unfortunately, the multiplayer game doesn't really offer anything that you can't get offline. Sure, you can form parties and create items with your fellow adventurers, but the game is meant to be played solo in the first place, so there's really no incentive within the game for players to bother getting together in the first place. Sure, it's fun to play with your friends, of course, but the multiplayer experience needs to offer a lot more to compensate for the repetitive combat and levels. Flagship is going to be offering a subscription plan that provides new features, but we're not entirely sure what those might be. Perhaps paid subscribers can move the chat window so it doesn't cover up important parts of the interface. That'd be something we'd like to see. So at the end, we're left with a game that has a great background, but no real story, lots of cool enemies, but shallow combat, awesome loot, but a terrible inventory system, and great atmosphere, but boring levels. It's been hard for us to determine whether an even mix of good and bad elements makes Hellgate London simply average. Your own enjoyment of the game is going to depend a lot on how far you can look past the game's obvious flaws to enjoy the things that it actually manages to get right.